In my pre-release video, I predicted that Kirara would be the best Dendro defensive option for a lot of teams, and a solid but not optimal option in others. I also predicted that she would most likely need her C4 to be a competent Dendro applicator, and would pretty much not be worth running if you didn't have her C4. Well, I've been testing her at C0 for the better part of the last 4 hours, in pretty much every team and situation I could think of, and I was right about some things, and totally wrong about others. And I also discovered that my favorite team for Kirara was one that I didn't even consider. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. First, let's go over what I think her optimal and most efficient builds are. For weapons, there's a few pretty decent choices. The Sacrificial Sword is the one that I'm going with, because you can refresh her shield every time you use her skill. It seems to me that you aren't able to use the Sacrificial Sword passive if you use her hold skill version, so it's mostly useful if you're just using the tap version. The Sapwood Blade is another really good option, which I haven't crafted yet, and the Favonius Sword is a good option if their team needs energy, such as if you're running her with Alhytham or Yaimiko. For her talents, I've gotten her shield to level 8, I, th I found that plenty strong. Her burst is at level 6, one day I'll level it up to 8 so I can see uh, some nuke damage with her, but because I found her shield pretty weak if I went for a damage build, we're gonna just stick with the damage build and not try and invest too heavily into her burst to do too much damage, but I did level it to 6 so it would be some nice damage when I did use it. For her artifacts, I tried out two different sets. I used a full instructor build so that she could maximize buffing her team. I found that really fine in every chamber that wasn't the Consecrated Beast chamber, in the Consecrated and create beast chamber I really would prefer the two piece two piece HP set and since the two piece two piece HP set is really not very hard to get it is the general best option that I recommend for most people but if you're really good at iframes and really good at dodging just you just want to have that shield there for emergencies I do think the instructors is a worthwhile option I wouldn't really go with any others except maybe again if you want to do some nuke damage showcase you can run the emblem of third fates now regarding her constellations I predicted that you would really need her c4 and as you can see, I have not wished for it, I have not activated it. I don't think you absolutely need C4 for this character to work in really any of teams, except for when she's being off-field in a Nilu team, and even then you can get away without her C4. However, it does require very strict rotation management. It's not a brain-dead, she's not a brain-dead character to play. She's not like Zhongli or like Layla, where you can just drop her shield and forget about her, or even Baiju. Because her Dendro application is tied to her skill, and you can only use her skill once every eight seconds. If you're not timing out and getting used to the timing of switching back in and using the skill off of cooldown, you're going to lack in Dendro application. You also sometimes have to get a bit creative, especially if you're using the Sacrificial Sword. You can do a tap skill to apply Dendro, refresh your skill, then do a hold skill, apply Dendro to the other characters, and so you can get creative with how you're doing your, your, your application. Overall, it does work. It keeps enough Dendro application to supply quicken to quick swap electro teams to refresh Nahida's skill in Nilu teams, but it does require you to manage it. It's not a set and forget situation. Quicken is the most obvious team for her. She provides a good Dendro shield for this Yaimiko team, and obviously you can use Lisa or Kaching in Yaimiko's place or Sino. I mostly played with Yaimiko just because she's on the banner and she is the strongest Quicken option out of those. Again, it just requires proper rotation management to make sure you always have Dendro on the enemies and you always have your shield up. The one downside versus Baiju and versus Yayo is if you do mess up the rotation, there's no way to heal back up. If you play properly and remember to refresh your shield, I think it's a better experience than with Baiju or with Yao Yao because you have more interruption resistance. But if you're brand new to using Kirara, it can feel like a worse experience because there's no way to heal to sort of make up for your mistake. I would say that overall, she is better in some ways and worse in some ways than the other two Dendros for this team. Now for Nilu, this is the first team I tried and it's the team I expected to, her to be pretty good in. I did didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I do think that I would like it a lot better if we had Kokomi here instead of Barbara, but without C4, Kirara's application really requires a lot of management to make sure you're keeping Nahida's skill refreshed. And because you really want to be on field with Barbara, it can be a little bit cumbersome to switch back to Kirara, switch that back to Barbara to be on field. What really surprised me, however, was this team. It's the same team that Kaveh really surprised me in, because you wouldn't think that without a healer that Kirara 
would be enough defensive utility. But paired with Sing Cho, especially because Sing Cho provides damage reduction before your shield even takes damage. So effectively, he makes your shield last 50% longer. And you can refresh Kirara's shield with Sacrificial Sword. And if you use on field Kirara, you can always make sure you get max Dendro application with her and always get max shield uptime and max shield refreshes. And so you end up with an extremely beefy shield, a lot of damage, and really good Dendro application. And it ends up being, honestly, one of my favorite teams. It is on par with my favorite Nilu teams. I don't think the damage is quite as high, but really, this team felt very good. And if you end up building Kirara and you like Nilu, I definitely do recommend trying out this team. It's my favorite on field Kirara team, and I love Kirara's normal attacks. They're super cute and super cool, and I just really like the character design. So, this is a really, really great way to use her as your on field character. The next team that really surprised me was Virgin. Again, I thought without a healer that the team is going to be really awful, but I found that this Virgin team performed extremely well. You do have to make sure that you keep up enough Hydro and Dendro on the enemy so that Burning does not overtake. Otherwise, you're going to die because Burning hurts the, your character a lot. But the shield stacking mechanic comes in clutch with this team because not only you have Karara's shield, you also have Toma's shield and Sing Cho's damage reduction. So all three damage reductions stack. And as long as you pr as long as you mind your rotations and don't get burning on the enemy, you feel almost unkillable, unstaggerable. It's really, really cool. And honestly, this team really, really surprised me in how good it is. I don't think it's quite as good as Baiju because Baiju provides more Dendro one when he's on field. And number two, he can he can heal you if you do happen to take damage. This team played perfectly, feels feels comfier than Baiju, but Baiju is more consistent because he has that healing. Hyper Bloom wasn't my favorite because I feel that Nahida just adds so much damage. For example, this Alhaitham team, Nahida and Kirara slot just adds so much damage and you already have Kuki as the healer and Singcho as damage reduction. So this remains my favorite Alhaitham team, but if you don't have Nahida or you want to free her up to the other slot, it can work, but I do feel like it is a noticeable damage loss and you don't, again, you don't really need the comfort because you already have Kuki and Sing Cho. My overall impressions of her, I slightly over predicted how well she would perform in Quicken teams and slightly under predicted how she'd perform in all of the other teams. I'd put her right below Baiju, right beside Yao Yao. A totally acceptable side grade to either of the two. Basically all three are acceptable side grades in almost every situation. They all have their own little unique use cases if you prefer one playstyle or the other. But I think the biggest reason to build her is if you think she's cute. And I don't say that as like a coping mechanism it's just that some people don't really want to play with a child character it's just not that exciting for them and other people find Baiju's design just not all that appealing or not their favorite and since those are the only two dendro options defensive utility I think Kirara is a really great option for those who enjoy this type of design instead I definitely fall into this camp she is good enough that I'll pretty much be using her instead of Baiju or Yao Yao in most teams because I really really like her design playstyle and animations more and her performance is close enough even at C0 that I won't really miss the other two except in certain teams where the other two really do have strong niches such as Yao Yao with Candice and Baiju as a driver in Hyper Bloom. For future prospects we better not get another Dendro defensive character we've already had so many and Kave counts as one that's like four in a row I think we're all very tired of this character archetype even though I'm very excited about this character in general. The biggest thing that I could see is if we get a better AOE Hydro Applicator, which I off that's off field that I definitely think is possible and actually does damage. You can use Kirara on field in her cat box form to apply a lot more dendro and actually be a competent hyper bloom driver. Right now she can't be a hyper bloom driver because she can't use her normal attacks in her box form and her box form is what applies the most dendro. So one day we may get to do cat box hyper bloom. Now is not that day, but that's the biggest future prospect I could see. And finally, how does she perform in the overworld? How is she versus someone like Sai or Yelan, I would say that she's not quite as valuable as Yelan because Yelan is simply so much faster. Sayu is decent. The climbing thing is nice. I'll probably do my best to try and have both her and Yelan on the team at the same time. And then I can use her skill while Yelan's skill is on cooldown. If you wished for Kirara, you probably also got Yoimiya or Yaimiko. And I have amazing guides for both of them right over there. Check them out and subscribe for more. Bye for now.